And the sign says organic cherries, product of the USA, two pounds, or for us metric Canadians, 907 grams, eleven dollars and ninety-nine cents. And yes, trust me, in front of the watermelons on this side of the sign, two pounds cello bags of organically grown American cherries for eleven ninety-nine. Now, what's the first thing you can tell me about this sign that is absolutely 100% wrong? Well, my, my pet peeve is fractionalizing prices. In Canada, we've done away with the penny. We no longer have a penny. So when they say $11.99, that is false advertising. It doesn't matter what store you go into. When the price is fractionalized to, uh, you know, $7.99, $12.99, whatever fractionalized price you see, that is false advertising. You cannot pay the fractionalized price. You cannot take that bag of cherries to the front counter at Costco and give them $11.99. Even if you've saved your pennies, they won't take it. It's, it's no longer a currency in Canada. So to me, all these prices are a lie they're false advertising oh let's call it fake prices fake prices of Canada Canada fake prices and uh, I do wonder why the politicians the government won't stand up for uh, consumers and tell the merchants to price things according to what they are and perhaps another reason I have a prejudice against this kind of pricing going on today is that all these stories out there, and I have tried to Google them and find information, it's anecdotal. I haven't found any specific proof, but there's a lot of stories where people working in banks and other businesses have set up computers to, uh, it's called salami or shaving. Get a little slice out of people's accounts. So if you're working in a bank and you slice... Uh, you know, a penny out of everyone's account. Nobody notices it. Nobody notices it. But when you do it to thousands, tens of thousands accounts, and you do it maybe every few weeks, whatever, it adds up to some real money. Pennies from heaven. All those pennies can be counted on coming together and making real currency. So that's issue one with the pricing of things. But the other issue that I have is that here in Canada, I mean, we live in a friggin' awesome country, and we are so indoctrinated to thinking that, you know, this is as good as it gets. I mean, Canadians, like Americans and like Brits and French and Germans and Russians and Chinese, think that we have the best country out there. We have the best system. We've got the best country. I mean, look at how well Canadians are living. I mean, if you traveled around the Okanagan right now, you'd be hard-pressed to think that there's any problems except... You know, down by City Park in Kelowna where they got the homeless and stuff. But uh, aside from the homeless population, you don't see people suffering. You don't see people out marching. And why should they be? They got food. They got shelter. They got everything you need. But the thing that I'm trying to get at is that with the inequality that we have, the quality of food that the average person gets is vastly different than the quality of food that the elite and the rich get. This falls into this uh, wealth inequality. If you're rich, you can live in a better uh, district. You can live in a better area. You can get away when the winter gets cold. You can do all kinds of different things when you're rich. Well, the same things apply to food. If you're rich, you have no problem with plopping down six bucks a pound for organically grown cherries because you know it's healthier. It's going to be better for you, better for your spouse, better for your kids. That is better than having the stuff that is sprayed with pesticides, herbicides, and all the chemicals that in many instances have been linked to cancer. So already we're seeing this happening with people eating produce and fruit. It doesn't matter what the heck you eat, if it's organic, it's better for you. Organic eggs from farms, organic chicken, organic carrots, or, or anything organic. But the thing with organic is it's going to cost you a lot more. And again, I say whether it's a young Canadian with a tuition and going to school, middle-income families here in the Okanagan with a couple of kids and a house, they got mortgage payments. They, 
And by July 4th, you got to have your property taxes paid, and that's thousands of bucks. I mean, think about it. Thousands of bucks for property taxes. you got your utilities, carbon tax. you got your car payment. Uh, you got your car insurance. It's tough squeezing by. So when it comes down to food and you see a pound of cherries for six bucks, and you might see a pound of cherries elsewhere for three bucks, and you figure, well, I'll buy the three dollar a pound bag of cherries, I'll wash them, and then same thing, who cares? But again, think about how this is reflecting on society in Canada where we have multiple tiers. And if you go past even the middle income family, the working class family struggling to get by now, look at the seniors. Look at what problems they're having with their fixed income pensions, health care, medic. They can't afford medicine for Pete's sakes. It was recently, you know, there was a number out in Canada about all the people that can't afford their medication. So what the hell do you think is going to happen to food? They're going to buy the cheapest food they can. And quite often buying the cheapest food means you're not eating healthy. Uh, in Costco, we walked around to the fish counter. They had beautiful, fresh Alaska cod and halibut in, on ice, beautifully displayed. It's exactly what ca- Canadian government recommends people eat in their diet. You got to have food. You got to have seafood. You got to be eating fish. Fish is good for your brain. It's good for your arteries. It's good for your heart. Eat fish. But how many people can afford $50 or so a kilogram for fresh fish? And by the way, for Americans, a kilogram is just over two pounds. So if you're looking at halibut from Alaska, it's about 50 bucks a kilogram. A kilogram. You can go into stores and see them on their little styrofoam trays, you know, like in Walmart, whatever. Little piece of halibut, 20, 25 bucks. You know, or seniors, young people, middle income, they're not buying that. They can't afford it. And then let's go over to, well, you need protein. For damn right you need protein. What protein can you get? Well, beef is a good source of protein, isn't it? I love beef. I mean, I tell you, even with Canada Day now, you know, having a hamburger barbecue or a steak, nothing like a steak or a roast. Imagine putting a nice big roast in your oven, having whipped potatoes and gravy. Holy smokes, any given day. I prefer it more in the fall and winter, but even in the summer, holy smoke, you can put a roast onto your barbecue and and it rotates on the rotisserie. Oh man, juicy, awesome. They had really fantastic roasts at Costco. 150, 170, 180 dollars each. I'm not talking about a gigantic roast, you know, that's the size of your leg, maybe from Flintstones, a Flintstone roast. No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about an ordinary roast, but man, that beef is a good cut. You know how I know it's a good cut? Well, first of all, I haven't tasted it because I'm not paying for 150, 160 bucks for a roast, but that's how I know it's a good cut because it's out of my league. It's out of my class. I'm a second, third, fourth class Canadian. I can afford those, you know, $20, $25 roasts. And I, I have to be blunt about that. I, I have bought roasts that uh, even prepared the best way that I knew how, were like shoe leather. It was absolutely ridiculous. You know, you slice it afterwards. You want to have a sandwich in it. You bite into it and you leave your teeth behind. Really ridiculous. I don't imagine any of these really expensive cuts of roast would be like that. They'd be so tender, so juicy. They would just come apart with your fork. Delicious. Well, that's not for for ordinary people anymore. You're not going to afford that. And I got to tell you, it wasn't always like this. I remember starting uh, out my working career in the 70s, got out of school, started working. You could go to a butcher and buy a hind quarter of beef for, what, 300, 350 bucks. Or you could buy a side for four, 500 bucks, give or t- maybe 600 bucks. But nonetheless, beef was cheap. As a matter of fact, all these food products were cheap. In the last couple of weeks, I've seen corn on the cob. Get a load of this one. 
Corn on the cob, which I used to get for a dollar fifty, dollar ninety nine a dozen. Most recently at Walmart, eighty nine cents per cob, or at an independent produce market, a dollar fifty per cob of corn. A dollar fifty. When has corn become a gourmet food item? You know that. Ooh, I got corn. Aren't I special? We're eating corn tonight, kids. You better, uh, you know, be extra good or you're not going to get your corn. Really? I mean, it's ridiculous. We bought a bag of grapefruit at Costco. And there's seven grapefruit in the bag. We weighed them. I, I mean, talk about crazy people. We weighed the grapefruit before and after peeling it. And the peel of the grapefruit was half a pound. Half a pound. So for every two grapefruit, you get one pound of peel. And the bag of grapefruit was, I think, well, actually, I think that was $9.99 too. One of these fractional prices. But uh, it works out to over a buck a piece. Again, in a produce store, $1.50, $1.60 per each grapefruit. Ridiculous. Again, when you have to eat healthy, and you see old people, and I have seen this first-hand account in grocery stores. They're shopping daily. They're eating little portions, looking for stuff that is marked down because its due date has arrived. And when they're paying and they pull out their purse change and are paying for it by uh, change, you know, quarters, n nickels, dimes, you know, trying to get... I have helped people in the checkout line. You know, I get impatient. I see. I, I feel bad about it. You know, I pull out a five bucks, a ten bucks, and pay for their grocery. It, you know, it, it just that is what can't. You know, we're celebrating a hundred fifty years of Confederation, a birthday bash for five hundred million dollars. There's going to be people living it up. There's going to be barbecues happening. People are going to be drinking beer galore because. Well, it's, I think Canada's national drink is a beer, and none of that watered-down crap they have in the States, but we got real beer that you have a six-pack, and you're going to be on the floor. You know, People are going to be celebrating, and they're not going to be thinking about all the other Canadians who are feeling the pain. And it's not they're feeling the pain because they've done anything wrong. Quite often, it's just a circumstance you're born into. Think about those young Canadians born into poverty and no way out. And then you think about the other Canadians who are born to families with extreme wealth, who by the time they're 20 have a Ferrari in their driveway. You know, they got their apartment or condo paid for. They're going to uh, university, but they don't have to worry about tuition. And talk about more inequality. If you're poor and you put yourself through university and you've done well and you graduated and then there's some kid who comes from a wealthy family and their dad or mom is on the board of directors of this and that or in a political landscape whatever who do you think is going to get the better cut of jobs just like they eat the better cut of meat and the better fish and the better everything they're also going to be getting the better jobs. This is the inequality that is happening and that is not being discussed widely enough in Canada. We seem to think that all these people that are hurting, that are suffering, and I can talk about divorced mothers, young mothers, single mothers, uh, uh, young men, working men. I mean, you want to you're a married guy you get divorced and you get hit with child support and spousal support and you're in poverty working at a good job for wages but you don't see it if so many people are hurting and now is a final poke in the eye with the big finger and rubbing it around to know that we are not going to be eating healthy at a time when we are told that eating healthy is so vital for your, you know, Canadians are living longer, they're supposed to be healthier. Well, I guess the final thing is if you're not going to eat healthy and you're going to get sick, you won't even be able to afford the medication, which has recently been also brought up that Canadians can't afford their medicine, a huge percentage. 
can't afford medicine. So we are screwed. No, I'm not going to be celebrating Canada Day. Canada is a country that I love and I'm proud of. I will celebrate Canada Day in my own way and that is making videos and talking about issues that we have to face not only for today but for tomorrow and the next day to come and the next year, the next generation. I'm not going to be misdirected. Misdirected, by the way, is a line used in the movie with John Travolta and Haley Berry, Swordfish, that while everyone's looking at one thing, other stuff is going on and you don't even know it. That's, you know, everyone's going to be looking at you know, the fireworks and the music and everything today and not even thinking about the real issues that we face. And I tell you, finally, the only thing i got to say finally about this is if you think things are bad now, it's not going to get better, folks. If people don't friggin' wake up and demand change, it's not going to get better for the next generation and the generations after them. At least that's the way I see it.